um, I'm Ayana Maia. I'm um, obviously want to say first generation transplant. My parents are from upstate New York. They are um, social workers that went to SUNY New Falls. Um, they participated in one of the first black studies programs in the nation back in the 70s. And so my background and my upbringing was always and has been about black people since I was a child. Um, so there's a consciousness and awareness that's been with me for a very long time. Um, my background is in psychology and I've been really privileged and fortunate to go through different rites of passages and initiations to address my own mental and emotional health um, via the way of the ancestors. Um, I've always had an interest in mental health and healing and um, just observing what's happening in my own family. But like I said, I was very privileged. I think the ancestors set me up since I was five. I watched Roots at the age of five. I literally woke up out my sleep, went downstairs, pushed in the VCR, and just started watching the TV. And that's where my personal in initiation started with my connection and my communication with the ancestors. Here, some 30 years later, um, I'm being asked by the ancestors and by people who meet me um, and believe in me, like Kim and Haki, to bring forth these things that I've been learning in the last couple of years. Um, in the humble experience of accepting what has happened to us here in America um, from what, has, what we went through, and people think, oh, once you get education, or once you get money, or once you get to a certain status, that that eliminates or um, prevents you from having certain experiences. And what I've learned is that no matter how much education and money you have, the things that have happened to us in the past will follow us. Unless you intentionally address those things, unless you intentionally um, take a look at those things, it's gonna pass on through our children. And if you see what's happening in our communities today, the level of violence and self-hate is surely rooted in what we've experienced here as Africans in America. So, um, I'm still in the gestation process of giving form to what it is I'm to offer the community, but I know for certain that I'll be working with um, the land and plants. Um, I was downloaded with a, um, a vision that's called Harriet's Healing Hive um, related to bee medicine because in my own journey, in my own recovery of trauma, emotional and mental specifically, the bees have literally come to me. And so I've been fortunate, like I said, to not just participate in um, different ind indigenous and African ceremonies and rituals, but I've also had incredible white allies that have given me access to other modalities of healing that I wouldn't necessarily be able to get from my own people. So the goal is to um, harmonize and bring together these teachings that I've had and to offer them to people who, have, um, who are victims or who have experienced trauma, particularly in the form of violence. And um, like I said, I'm still you know, figuring out and receiving information. I'm just really um, humbled and grateful to be under the tutelage of Kim and Haki um, because when I came across this program, I was just looking for some way to live, some way so I could have a peace of mind and, re and regroup myself um, from the shock of the, of the violence or the abuse that was happening in my own family. And so, um, while that was going on, like a true rites of passage initiation, it brings you close to death. When you look at shamanism, particularly in African um, or indigenous uh, avenues, you are literally risking your life, your mind, your body, and spirit for the sake of the people. And um, like I said, I've been grateful and fortunate to have gone through a traditional training with guidance and with leadership. So um, my job and having to be able to survive certain cycles and certain patterns of my family is now to give back because a lot of people are suffering on different levels from different um, elements internal, which is causing us to be abusive and violent and continuing to kill each other. Um, and as long as we don't work together and can kill each other, how are we gonna fight against the larger enemy, you know? So um, that's my little spiel of who I am and what I do. And I'm just in, a, like I said, a humble space to continue to be um, in this, this space in Baltimore on Oswego, which I actually learned Oswego is a Native American name that actually is a Native American tea and it's actually related to bee balm, which is a herb or a plant that bees tend to like a lot. So like Kim said, we can't make up when the ancestors work through us or orchestrate stuff. I can't make this up. Um, I'm just being obedient and listening and paying attention. Like I said, I didn't even know I was going to be here today, to be honest. Um, and I was 
able to make it. So I'm glad to learn about your organization, and I'm glad to represent Kim and Haki and their program. Um, and again, just knowing that artistry goes beyond um, the actual, you know, traditional forms of art. But Kim sees me as a healing artist, and so I'm just grateful to be a service in whatever way that it's being called for. Thank you for your attention. And Ayana has been living in our artist in residence property for over a year now. Oh, I'm so glad. I didn't know if we were going to make it, but Ayana has proven herself to be vested um, in the process of self-development. And many of us, we run to the front of a movement to serve, to be in charge, to be the mouthpiece, but we don't understand how traumatized we are and how we show up with that trauma in spaces where we heal, and sometimes we do more damage than help. Um, and so I appreciate you going in over the time that you've been there to say, let me focus before I heal the community on healing myself. So that's 100% nothing but respect. Thank you for talking. She swears she never knows the schedule. She didn't know she was going to be here tonight. But we're so glad that she joined us. Um, last but not least, before I talk about the Freedom Rides program, I want to acknowledge Baba Hannibal L. I mentioned that when we first started working with the Roots of Scouting organization in 2019, that it was as the result of the Underground Railroad excursion. To me, the story of Harriet Tubman and Frederick Douglass and how they found their way to freedom right down the street is the most powerful story that I've ever heard. And I have been in some places, y'all. I've traveled the globe. I can say that. And when I hear people's story, I mean, from Sundiata to Massa Musa, I still haven't found any story that really gets into my stomach and motivates me like that in my own backyard of Harriet Tubman and Frederick Douglass. And I can't escape it. And I said, I need to make sure that we can take this history off the page. And Bob and Hannibal L., I met him through the Roots of Scouting organization at a meeting just like this. So I'm looking for business cards. I'm wondering, if nothing else, who I will meet from this room tonight that will be with us for the rest of our journey. And you know what he said? I see you. I see this program, and I will be here at this program, an overnight camping trip, history-based, in the Eastern Shore, every time that you call. Clap for your own, because he has been since 2019. Yes, yes, during the COVID, when they said stay home like your life depended on it. He was with us and those kids down on the Eastern Shore in 2021 when we decided to expand and go to take them into Virginia, to Massena and in the Shenandoah Valley in the mountains. He came with us. He was with us this year. And shout out to Jerry because he donated to make sure that one of those kids came. So clap for him too because money matters. Money matters. Yes. And so Baba Hannibal L, I just want you to say a few words about why you stayed and what you've seen over the course of the Underground Railroad excursion while you've been with us all these years. Well, anytime and I'm always saying, anytime I can get out in the woods and get away from the noise in Baltimore, invite me. <laughs> you know? And I, if it's not paid for, I pay my own way. But that's one of the reasons I enjoy going out in the woods, per se. Anytime I get an opportunity to go out in the woods with young people and teach them life skills, tie in how camping and survival skills, and just general being a good person out in the woods. It's so different out in the woods. A lot of our children, they don't get out of this jungle, this concrete jungle. And it's kind of like it's a book called Iceman Inheritance. Mm -hmm. And it's similar, I'm, I ain't gonna go into the book a lot, but it's like, it's saying that the Europeans grew up in this cold, barren place with no fruit, no vegetables, so that's the behavior that they're going to demonstrate because they barbaric. So our children in this concrete jungle, nowadays without the proper guidance, they're just being barbarians and, you know, just crazy. So when you get out in the woods, it's a whole different protocol. You pitch your own tent, you sleep in the tent, you cook food outdoors, fresh air, sunshine. And it's an experience that all children need to experience. I didn't experience camping growing up, but I went to North Carolina every summer, and I loved it. <laughs> you know, no airplanes, no helicopters. Well, they wouldn't use helicopters much then anyway, but you're away from all the noise. 
you just actually sit on the porch and hear crickets and things, you know? <laughs> Which in Baltimore is like, sometimes the only time you hear the crickets is like 2 o'clock in the morning or something. Because everybody's driving around with their noisy car, their radio playing, and people fussing and fighting. So anytime we can get children out in the woods, it's a good experience. If more children would get out in this woods and experience a couple nights out under the stars, things that they don't see in Baltimore City because of the light, I mean, it would change their behavior if they did it enough. You know, that's, that's it. No, absolutely. And again, you just don't even know. <laughs> I'll keep it for our private conversations, but you have no idea what it has meant um, over the past four years now. Uh, we have learned to support each other. I've learned to be humble and listen. I've seen him call to attention a discipline in young men, uh, and it's difficult to do that in a week, in a weekend. Um, but it's something that young men that understand, the elders that got it together, that they, they want that attention. They crave that discipline when it's given to them by somebody that has earned the right to hold them accountable. And so I appreciate you being the standard. Sister Kimberly, you have 10 minutes. No problem. And we're going to go to Kevin Crawford when you finish. He has a presentation. Yeah. And then we're going to come back to you. But okay. several people have some things to say. Absolutely. So in that case, I've spoken as facilitator, but I'm going to cut mine short and ask our leadership, Baba Haki Ami, to talk about the Freedom Rides Initiative. We hope that all of you will consider joining us next year. And we have a table here with more information. We have things for sale, so give us your money and take something <laughs> with you in advance. Um, I'll ask you to do that, and I'll leave it to our president. Certainly. Uh, uh, thank you all, my brothers for, and sisters. Uh, for being present. Haki Ami here, uh, President of Teaching Arts Institute. Many of you know me here, but for those that do not, it's certainly an honor to be here. Uh, officially, I, I've been working for uh, the City Fire Department for 19 years now, and I met Brother Leo Former. I used to be on the board of the Vulcan Blazers, which <laughs> has been supportive of the organization significantly uh, throughout some time. I'm also a board member for the Maryland Legislative Black Caucus Foundation. And the only thing, Bob Hannibal, that we that we're missing for the uh, Underground Railroad excursion has been something I did with Brother Leo. And what this brother was talking about three years ago, I actually went with uh, Brother Leo. Where we go, Leo? Uh, Rock Creek. Memorial okay, you Scott remember. You remember. All right. I still got that more picture. Than, more <laughs> than one year. Okay. Yeah. So we did some shooting out there, but um, EMT, right? Yeah, firefighter. We do it both. Yeah. yeah so. Fair. 19 years, so looking forward to other opportunities as well <laughs> after that. But um, let me just quickly summarize with a little few minutes. Uh, a few weeks ago, we had uh, a international event at our uh, Ta Air at Oswego. Many of you may have heard of the Mandela Fellows. Now, that's a program started under President Obama. Each year, over uh, 50,000 Africans on the continent apply to be a part of this initiative. Over 700 of them, uh, you know, are chosen. So we were actually had one. Many of you may have seen her, or some of them. Baba Hannibal, you've seen one. And thank Grandma Edna uh, in the building. I thank you for coming and blessing us. Uh, give her a hand. Go ahead. Thank you. So, for blessing us uh, at our top air. And Kim, you didn't mention that Mama Salima also came once or twice to the Underground Railroad, I think, or you were somewhere. Yes, yes, yes. So let me thank you, Mom Salima, of course. So let me thank you. Uh, as, uh, as Kim said, gone to Tanzania with us as well. So, um, so we're excited about, you know, last year we had a tremendous experience with the Freedom Rides. Uh, our former State Attorney, Marilyn Mosby, was the curator. Let's give her a strong black hand. Forward. She uh, is, is considering uh, participating. She was a strong advocate for us and, and positioning uh, this initiative. And so we're excited about what's going to ha be happening next year. And, uh, you know, I, I just really wanted to just say thank you all for all of your work, support, and phone calls that I've talked to you uh, over the years. I've grown personally and, 
and, and as a true, well-rounded African, but it wouldn't be that way if I, if I hadn't, you know, adjusted myself to, to, to really try to become whole within the community. And so we're looking forward. We have this great elder here. Uh, this is going to be a tremendous opportunity, and we're, we're working. We, we've been to D.C. Uh, at the traditional African spiritual, uh, uh, what they call a circle, a healing circle. Last week they do that every year in D.C. Baba Nana, Baba Brown, Yamari, several others. Uh, we went to the Cuban Embassy last last week with Baba Melvin Foot, a delegation of forty, about forty uh, Pan African. Dr. Julius Garvey uh, spoke there. We will be in the at the United Nations next tomorrow, actually, well, day after tomorrow. And then we'll be at Howard University uh, uh, t next week, uh, where Dr. Eric Connor and PLO Lumumba. You don't know who both of those are. They are some of the. They are the cause for what's going on in Niger right now, if I may say uh, so. So I say seize the time on many different levels. And so I think we covered the freedom rides. I mean, but we went through ten different states throughout the South. Uh, we're going to adjust it a little bit, but you know, we have 35 young people from. Four, five or six different schools in Baltimore. And let me just give you one example. When we were in D.C. at the, the African American History Museum, uh, there was a, a black woman. She just said, she just looked at the children. She said, y'all are the most well-mannered children I've ever seen. I want, you know, and I, you know, I want you, you all to know these are Baltimore students, and they're not from Poly and City or whatever. If you, people think that that's they got to be the best. But, you know, that just was impressive. And it wasn't just there. When we were in, I think it was South Carolina, someone said it again. Like, these children are so well behaved. And it just, it just resonated with me. They're used to seeing children being unruly. So I was just like, these young people are doing the right things. And so we got to build a circle around them and develop them as leaders. And so that's why, you know, over the next couple uh, weeks and years, we hope to continue to create relations with them. So that's all I have. Uh, uh, 35 young people. Yes, 30, from, about 35. From public schools? Yeah, yes, public schools. Uh, was uh, Foss Park, Dunbar, uh, what schools? Do you remember?